subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 29th of March. India's Foreign Minister says BIMSTEC member states must collectively combat terrorism, violent extremism. Thousands of opposition supporters rally against Pakistan PM Imran Khan in Islamabad. And flag business booms ahead of local level election in Nepal. And now for all the details, Indian Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday said the BIMSTEC member states must collectively combat terrorism and violent extremism as he emphasized India's commitment to intensify, expand areas of cooperation, especially connectivity, energy and maritime at the 18th BIMSTEC ministerial meeting in Sri Lankan capital Colombo. BIMSTEC summit is being hosted by Sri Lanka on 30th of March. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the virtual summit of the BIMSTEC grouping. Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday took part at the 18th BIMSTEC ministerial meeting in Sri Lankan capital, Colombo. Besides India and Sri Lanka, BIMSTEC comprises Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, Nepal and Bhutan. Speaking at the meeting, Jay Shankar said that member states must collectively combat terrorism and violent extremism as he emphasized India's commitment to intensify, expand areas of cooperation, especially connectivity, energy and maritime. We cannot ignore the challenges that terrorism and violent extremism as also transnational crime and narco-trafficking or indeed new challenges such as cyber attacks pose to all of us. Uh, all these affect our economic development efforts. We need to put in place the remaining elements of the legal architecture that will enable our law enforcement agencies to collaborate more closely and more effectively. Jashankar said that he was looking forward to the adoption of the Charter and Master Plan at the BIMSTEC Summit on Wednesday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the virtual summit of the BIMSTEC grouping on 30th of March, which is expected to focus on expanding economic engagement among its member countries. Jashankar later held separate discussions with foreign ministers of Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh aimed at bolstering bilateral ties. He reached Colombo on Monday to hold bilateral talks with Sri Lanka's top leadership and attend the BIMSTEC summit. A nationwide strike by trade unions and banking staff in India on its second and final day affected essential services partially in some states, while private banks and businesses continued to function normally. The demonstrators opposed proposed labor laws and privatization and warned they will continue to hold protest until their demands are met. Hundreds of demonstrators, including members of trade and bank unions, observed a nationwide strike for a second day on Tuesday against government's policies which they believe would affect workers, farmers and people at large. The protesters demanded the government to scrap proposed changes in labor laws and increase allocation of wages under rural employment schemes and oppose the national monetization pipeline. The bank unions which joined the strike said they are opposed to government's move to privatize two public sector banks as announced in Federal Budget 2021-22. Opposition parties, especially the left aligned, also supported the two-day strike. Today, in all over India, even in the second day also, total 10 lakh people, 10 lakh bank employees and officers are participating in the strike. Our only one aim, don't privatize public sector banks. Because public sector understands the bank both of the nations. Because of that public sector only, this five years plan is being implemented. Even green revolution, white revolution, blue revolution, whatever revolution you take, that is because of that government banks only. The strike on its final day particularly affected essential services including banking services and public transport in some states. In southern Kerala, traders also shuttered down shops in a few localities. However, private banks and businesses continue to function normally elsewhere in the country. 
And Pakistan's opposition party staged a rally in capital Islamabad late on Monday in a show of power against Prime Minister Imran Khan, who faces a no-confidence motion for ouster, pushing the South Asian nation closer to political turmoil. The parliament will begin a debate on the motion on March 31st, and a vote is to be held within seven days. Thousands of supporters of Pakistan's opposition party staged a rally in the capital Islamabad late on Monday in a show of power against Prime Minister Imran Khan, who faces a no-confidence motion for ouster. The rally came hours after Pakistan's parliament took up a no-confidence motion moved by opposition lawmakers on Monday in a bid to remove Prime Minister Imran Khan, pushing the South Asian nation closer to political turmoil. Leader of the opposition in the National Assembly and PMLN President Shehbaz Sharif, who tabled the no-confidence motion against Khan at the rally, berated the latter for the economic turmoil in the country. Imran Niazi, who is talking about the Medina night of the night, has Pakistan to the people of Kangal and the people of this country, who is a poor country, who is a poor country. Fazlur Rahman, president of PDM, a coalition of opposition political parties, called Khan's PTI-led government illegal and incompetent. The no-confidence motion comes as Pakistan faces a recurring economic crisis, with Khan's government banking on the International Monetary Fund to release the next tranche of a six billion U.S. dollar rescue package to shore up dwindling foreign currency reserves. Khan has blamed a foreign-funded conspiracy for trying to topple his government. Meanwhile, the House will begin a debate on the motion on Thursday and a vote is to be held within seven days. And moving on, scores of Baloch political activists recently staged a protest in Germany against Balochistan's illegal occupation by Pakistan. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans as they highlighted human rights violations by the Pakistani army in the region and urged the international community to intervene. Scores of Baloch activists held a demonstration in Germany's Oldenburg city this past weekend to observe March 27 as Black Day, the day Pakistani forces occupied Balochistan in 1948. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans and claimed thousands of Baloch people have been killed or forcibly abducted in military aggression since 1948, while Pakistan continues to plunder Balochistan's natural resources. People are being killed or forced to disappear. You can count so many families, either men, right now women are being also killed, even kids. If they're playing inside or in front of their houses, they're also being bombed just because they want to check their measles or bombs, if they work or not, whether they want to kill Baloch or they want to oppress them. Either way, Baloch is being killed. Activists have long blamed that Baloch people have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani state over the years. The protesters demanded the immediate withdrawal of the occupying forces from the region. And a mobile library bus chugs around northern Kunduz province of Afghanistan promoting book reading among youths and children and eliciting beaming smiles from them. A mobile library bus navigates around Kunduz province in northern Afghanistan, promoting book reading among youths and children. The library bus has a librarian and driver on board and is stocked with 1800 books in Dari, Pashto and English. The topics range from science, culture, stories, politics and history. Abdul Kahar Hisabi, director of Kohandas Institute of Higher Education and sponsor of the bus said, the aim behind Library on Wales is to provide the school children to have access to books in an easy way. The library is a library that is a library that is a library that is a 
Children are all smiles to have access to mobile library outside their schools. However, the case may not be the same for girls and women in Afghanistan. Since Taliban's return to power last year, girls' education has been hit particularly hard as millions of girls across the country have been barred from secondary education in state schools. Last week, the Taliban backtracked on an announcement that high schools will open for girls, saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. Moving on to news from Nepal, flag makers in Nepal's capital Kathmandu are witnessing a huge demand of flags of different political parties months ahead of the local level election in May this year. They are bracing for more sales in coming weeks as the election fever rises. Business is going brisker for flag makers in Nepal months ahead of the local level elections slated to be held on May 13 this year. Carders from various political parties have been thronging to shops like that of Naresh Kumar Chaudhary in narrow alleys of capital Kathmandu as the election fever rises. Chaudhary says he has been making and selling about 2,000 pieces of flags of different political parties each day and will soon add up more workers to brace for more orders in the coming weeks. Been into the business of flag making, screen printing and designing for the past 20 years, Chaudhary claims to have made about 3.5 million Nepali rupees by selling flags, t-shirts and other promotional items in the earlier election of 2017. <laughs> The local level election which is being held after a gap of five years will witness an eligible population of 17.7 million exercise its franchise. The election outcome will determine the mood of people ahead of provincial and federal polls expected to be held later this year. And scores of young girls turned out to participate in a police recruitment drive that began in India's cold desert region of Ladakh on Monday. Around 4,500 persons, including both men and women, have filed their applications to join the police force. Hundreds of girls turn up for a recruitment drive for the post of police constables that began in India's Himalayan region of Ladakh on Monday. A senior official said that the female participants showed great enthusiasm to serve the nation as their stamina and physical strength was put to test on day one. Around 4,500 people, including both men and women, have filled their applications for the recruitment. इतने वेल मैनर्ड और डिसिप्लिन तरीके से उन्होंने इस पूरे प्रोसेस में पार्टिसिपेट किया है स्टार्ट में इनिशियली कुछ हिकप्स आए हमारे टेक्निकल ग्लिचेस की वजह से वी हैड टू पोस्टपोन फॉर अ कपल ऑफ डेज बट कितने सब्र के साथ और पेशेंस के साथ उन्होंने कोऑपरेट किया है पूरे बोर्ड के साथ इट इज ट्रूली अप्रिशिएबल तो जो भी एक्टिविटी हो रही है सीसीटीवी कैमरे में कैप्चर हो रही है और टाइमिंग जो है सिस्टम बेस्ड है तो इसमें ह्यूमन इंटरवेंशन बिल्कुल ही नहीं है पुलिस हमने डिप्लॉय किए बट वो एसिस्ट करने के लिए अदरवाइज ये सारा जो है मशीन बेस्ड है तो इसमें फुली ट्रांसपेरेंट बिसाइड्स प्रोवाइडिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज सच रिक्रूटमेंट ड्राइव्स आल्सो बिल्ड एंड सीमेंट फेथ ऑफ द यूथ इन द सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस वेल दैट्स ऑल वी हैव फॉर यू फ्रॉम साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग नाउ आवर व्यूअर्स कैन वॉच द शो ऑन साउथ एशिया न्यूज लाइन डॉट कॉम यू कैन ऑल्सो विजिट आस ऑन फेसबुक डॉट कॉम स्लैश एस एशिया न्यूज लाइन एंड फॉलो आस ऑन ट्विटर एट एस एशिया न्यूज लाइन That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.